This is the new Hyundai Kona, and it's a little bit like Aya Stark from the series Game of Thrones in the way that it's got a better looking sister. Now that is of course the Kia Stonic, because of course Kia and Hyundai are related and they're very much similar cars underneath. The thing is that I can't understand is the chap that designed this thing also designed that, the Lamborghini Murcielago. What? What's happened to him since then? He's, he's kind of lost his touch a bit. Now in terms of pricing, so the Hyundai Kona, it starts from six and a half thousand pounds, but if you get it from Carwa, the starting price is just over 15,000 pounds. Now if you want to see how much you can save on a new car, click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen or the link below the video to go to carwow.com. The best way to describe the interior of the Kona is functional. So everything's laid out in a logical way, which is good. And yeah, there's decent cubby spaces here and door bins are large enough and the glove box is okay. And there's some space under here, which is quite good. And a couple of cup holders, but it's all just so achingly boring. I mean, look at it. It's just black, 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 and it's all scratchy, scratchy, scratchy. <sighs> God, it's a bit depressing in here actually. Now you can liven it up on high specification cars, the top two specifications with some interior color coding trim and stuff, but most of the models, the one they actually want, which is the SE model, this car, you can't get it, just like this. Now equipment is otherwise pretty generous. So the entry level model gets things like DAB digital radio, air conditioning and Bluetooth for your mobile phone, but you don't want the entry level version because it gets a small little display of five inch. You want to step up, like I say, to this SE, which is the pick of the range for this seven inch display. And that then comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And I will be using Android Auto because it's slightly better than the Hyundai system and it includes sat nav and I will use Waze sat nav because that is the best in the business right now. If you don't want to use that though and you want to navigate through the Hyundai system, you've got physical shortcut buttons which are easier to operate on the move and the whole system is okay generally, it's fairly logical, but the display is a bit low definition. Now, if you want more detail on what the infotainment system is like to use, click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen or on the link below the video to watch my detailed review of it. I should point out that high-spec cars do come with their own satellite navigation system, but I'll refer you to my early comment about just using Waze because it's the best. And like I said, I'm using it on this one liter SE version. I put the details of this particular car into CarWow and got an offer back for just over 16,000 pounds. So yeah, it makes it a bit better value, a bit more tempting, I guess. Now let's move on to the back because the Kona being a slightly tall vehicle should have decent headroom. If I sit up dead straight, I've got about that much space above my head. So people really tall might struggle back here, but I'm okay. Knee rooms, all right. And generally it's fine back here. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> so let's move on to the boot. Now the boot on this car is smaller than say on something like a set of Rona or a runner capture but it's not too bad it's all right i like the fact that you've got this false floor so you can just slide items in and out so there's no load lip now you're wondering what's under there aren't you so ooh, look you've got some extra storage areas and beneath that look we've got a space saver spare wheel which is handy there's also a few tethering points here and another benefit of that raised floor is this look when you fold the seats down they lie pretty flat so if you want to slide items straight to the front you can do. Now if you want more detail on just how much stuff you can fit in this car's boot and how easy it is to fit a child seat, click in the top right hand corner of the screen on the pop-out banner or on the link below the video to watch my detailed practicality video. Now then, it's time for the car wow, five annoying things about this car. While the rear windows do go all the way down, which is good, there's no anti-trap mechanism on the electric window. Ugh. That's not particularly child friendly. There's a little warning sticker here which tells you to have the central head restraint high enough to go in the middle of the back of your head so it doesn't snap your neck. But that's as high as it goes. So I'd be a goner. What the heck is that reflector doing there? It's just awful. It's like off some nasty old push bike. This is supposed to be a petrol engine, but it's pretty much as noisy and as rattly as a diesel engine. I mean, look at this. Look at it vibrating. Maybe that's why they call it a GDI D is in homage to diesel. While some of the many vents on the car pass, the car wow stick of truth test like there, and obviously here, many others don't, such as there. 
Look at that. What an awful, horrible, pointless, needless, nasty, tacky, yucky bit of trim. It's not all negative, though. Here's five good things about this car. You can get the Kona with all-wheel drive, and the system will send 50% of the engine's power to the rear wheels. It even includes a differential lock, which works up to 25 miles an hour for superior traction. Plus, four-wheel drive versions get a more sophisticated rear independent suspension setup for a smoother ride. All but the entry-level Kona gets electric lumbar support for the driver's seat. And I like the fact that the seat recliner isn't on a slow-to-operate ratchet, but a lever. Being a Hyundai, the Kona gets a five-year warranty which is better than you get with most manufacturers. There are these little winglets on the daytime running lights, which help improve the aerodynamics. The top tier specification versions of the Kona are available with four contrasting interior trim colors. You can also get them with two contrasting roof colors, either in gray or black, but all models are available with a choice of nine paint schemes, including this rather lovely orange. When you're driving the Kona, you do notice that you sit a little bit higher than you would do in a normal small car, say like a Ford Fiesta. And that does give you a slightly better view ahead. And all around visibility is pretty good, actually. There's not too many blind spots and there's a big back window and you get a little extra little window in the rear panel as well to just help for when you're like pulling out of junctions like that. Actually, if you click on the pop-out button at the top right-hand corner of the screen or on the link below the video, you can see for yourself by checking out my point of view video test drive. Now, the car's controls, the gear shift's fine, the brakes are fine, the steering, it's all right, you know, it's not the best, but it does a job, you know, it puts the car where you point it. What's not so great, though, is the suspension. So, it's really a bit too far. It, it makes the car just jiggle about constantly. I mean, I can feel all my fatty bits wobbling about, and it's making me think that maybe I need to put in a bit of extra time at the gym, or maybe eat less cakes. That's not a good thing, I like cakes. Now, all that would be okay, I guess, if the car felt fun to drive and while it does go around corners pretty well it's never as fun as a normal small car like a, a Ford Fiesta it's just a little bit I think I think they've got it wrong they should have just made it comfy and soft rather than try to make it sporty because it's just not now it can feel quite quick if you go for the 1.6 litre turbo petrol but that's a bit expensive the engine in this guy's the one to go for it is a one litre now that may sound like it's a little bit slow but it's actually not slow it just seems slower than it actually is because when you rev it, it makes a right racket that you expect to be going quicker. What I can't fault though is the economy, so this one's averaging over 42 miles per gallon, which is all right really for real world driving. Now, if you click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen or on the link below the video, you can go to carwire.com to see how much you can save on a Hyundai Kona, or any car for that matter. So then, what's my verdict on this car? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should avoid the Hyundai Kona. You see, while it's an okay-ish car, it's essentially the same as a Kia Stonic, and that's better looking and comes with an extra two-year warranty. So what's the point of that? If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it. Click on our logo to subscribe to this channel, on the video window for more content, and on the deals box to go to carwire.com to see how much you can save on a new car. Now, I did spot the Easter egg in this video. It was the Swedish Krona, get it? Kona, Krona, in the Cars Cup holders.